horseshoe is back. What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Bring the Juice podcast. Today, we're going to be recapping the Colts' third preseason game against the Detroit Lions, in which the Colts were victorious in a win of 27-17. to Derek Larger joining you today. We have our very special guest, Harish, from the AFC South Fan Battle Podcast. How you doing, Harish? Hey, what's going on, Derek? Thanks for having me on today. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, we, we get to talk about another Colts win again. It's only preseason, but, you know, uh, the Colts go 3-0 and for the first time in almost 30 years in the preseason. So, you know, this team, despite, you know, its flaws in a lot of different areas and its depth chart, this team definitely uh, always finds a way to fight back and win these games, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's uh... – that's a showing to the the coaching and and just uh, what we've built, what has been built here since the Chris Ballard, Frank Clark era. You know, I think it's interesting. I think one thing that you know you tell a lot of fans when things go awry is, oh, they're taking and oh, they're this, then they're that. But this team just has fight in them. You know, Chris and, and Frank will not let this team fail, and I think this is a, a showing of it. You know. Uh, obviously the points aren't coming as we expect them, but this team is nitty and gritty and, and, and they fight back. And, and, and I think this is indicative of that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I guess first thing we uh, want to look at here is the quarterback group. It's always the thing that every Colts fan wants to see with this quarterback battle. Uh, Jacob Eason finishing the day uh, 10 of 14 for 74 yards. Sam Ellinger, three of three for 63 yards, was sacked once and uh, was injured on the big throw where he throw, uh, threw it to Patman. So we'll talk about that in a second. And Brett Hundley got some action today as or yesterday as well, going six of 12 for 52 yards, a touchdown to Deion Jackson and an interception and also tacked on 30 rushing yards to go with it. So. Overall, looking at these quarterbacks, I I don't think I've ever asked you about uh, Sam Ellinger and Eason, who deserves that backup spot. But after looking at, you know, this game specifically and looking at the others, who do you think deserves that backup spot? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's really close, to be honest, right? As as close as we want. And, you know, being a Texas fan, I'm happy to see Sam Ellinger do well. Um, Being in the great in in Austin, you know, 20 minutes from the stadium, it's, it's awesome to see Sam do well. Uh, but I don't think it's really close, to be honest with you. Uh, I think Jacob Eason, if anything, yesterday solidified his spot as the backup. I think Eason played really well, actually. Like I don't, I don't think uh, there was anything that that made me, you know, uh, be panicked or be concerned as I guess as I had in the last couple of weeks. Uh, again, he's. We've got to understand this is truly Jacob Eason's first time to to hit the field in, in quote unquote live action games. Right. So uh, I think for his first preseason, I think he's handling it well. Uh, and I think he will be the backup. Uh, Sam's going to be interesting. I think Frank said um, his knee didn't look good, which is, uh, you know, you don't know if that's ACL or what that is. So that's kind of, that, that's, you feel bad for the guy, but I think he had a pretty good camp for a six round draft pick. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, it, I, I think Jacob played well enough for sure to secure that backup spot. Yeah, I mean, they, they said it that all quarterbacks played relatively decent yesterday. Uh, no big plays once again, except for that Patman play. But, you know, that big play ended up potentially costing Ellinger some valued time here in the locker room practicing with these guys. We'll see how bad the, uh, the injury report was. And before we go any further on these, I did want to mention uh, the Fisher versus Nelson uh, COVID issue. Uh, there was the re- issue of a few days ago when people were asking um, if if uh, he ended up testing positive for COVID. That's Nelson. Uh, apparently, that's not true. Uh, Fisher was the one who had the COVID, but he was a close contact because of being next to Fisher during the rehab process and everything. They were close together quite often. So uh, Nelson has remained negative uh, and was just a close contact. So if he remains negative throughout the next five days, then he'll be able to return early this next week. So that's great news. Uh, 
Obviously, <laughs> Indianapolis needs him to be back onto the field as much as he can to kind of get rehab work on that foot before going into the season. So better him missing five games than or five days than 14. But let's go ahead and move to the rushing department here. You and I kind of talked about it right before uh, we started this. Uh, a couple good running back days here. Uh, Benny LeMay, 11 carries for 44 yards. Uh, again, putting on another performance as he tries to earn a spot here. And the big one was the undrafted free agent out of Duke, and that was Deion Jackson, 10 carries for 81 yards and a touchdown run on a 42-yard uh, touchdown run there. And Jackson also had one catch for three yards, which also resulted in a touchdown. Uh, what was your thoughts on the running back group today, especially Deion Jackson? Yeah, you know, impressive, um, especially Deion Jackson. We we have this streak of undrafted free agents going into you know making the making the team. So you know he, he definitely made himself a good case. I mean, I think I think unfortunately for both of these guys as well as they've played, we're just so deep at running back. It's really difficult to 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 say. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think Deion Jackson can make the team. I don't think practice squad is out of the question for either of these guys. Um, if if they clear waivers, right? I guess that's the big thing. Is hopefully they can clear waivers. Uh, I think Deion Jackson is a guy that we should definitely attempt to retain on a practice squad spot. Um, but yeah, it's solid performance. It's just it's just tough when you have a, a running back room that's as deep as ours. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you know, as many good running backs as we have, you know, it doesn't really make it easy when you have four running backs that could start somewhere else. You hope some of these guys. I, I hope Deion Jackson stays on the practice squad, and then Lemay finds a spot somewhere else. I just hope that's what happens, but let's go to the receivers really quick. Uh, Patman leading the way with reception yards, two catches for 64 yards, one being that long 60-yard uh, completion that he had with Ellinger. Uh, Strawn, another good day, five catches for 61 yards. Granson, three catches for 23 yards on four targets. Uh, Tariq Black had two for 14 yards. Uh, those were rounding out the top four receivers. Uh, overall thoughts on the Colts receivers yesterday? Yeah, I think Sean got a lot of work yesterday. Uh, I think he played well until the fourth quarter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I think we've got a, a really good side of look at him. I think this guy's uh, special. Uh, and not special in a way that he's going to be a, a number one or a number two. I think he is situationally special, um, especially in the end zone. He had an opportunity to go get one from Jacob. Uh, I believe it's in the second quarter, um, which I thought it was fairly well thrown ball. And those are the kinds of things you want to see from him is his ability to use his size and his athleticism at, at 6'6", 6'5", and be able to be – I think that's where he is going to uh, bring value to this team is in that in that 20 area. So uh, really good. I think Batman played well. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw on Twitter, but Zach was talking about – uh, neither of these guys are very good gunners when it comes to kickoff, right? So yeah, uh, definitely an area that needs to be looked at. And I think they're, th this is an area that both of them will have to contribute in throughout the season in order to maintain yeah. a spot on this roster. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, I, I assume, I think most people assume that Strawn has done enough this offseason to kind of warrant uh, a, a spot on this roster because of, you know, just what he's been able to do and as raw as he is, but still putting production up against some good corners. Uh, but the big question is Patman versus Doolin. I mean, you know, we, we kind of all assume that Patman's probably going to end up being on the practice squad if he weren't to make this roster. Cause Patman's done enough to warrant being here to at least be considered. Uh, do you think Patman rounds out the last spot or do you think you go with Zach and say that, uh, Doolin deserves to be that guy because of his special teams ability. Yeah, I think it's tough. Uh, I, I honestly don't know, but I mean, if Patman doesn't make, let's just say, let's just say Patman doesn't make the squad, which I, I think he does. I think, I think he's, uh, I understand Dylan's, I understand Dylan's value special teams wise, but you've also got Naheem Hines and you've also got, um, you know, um, Isaiah Rogers who can return kickoffs, right? Um, I, I think Gunner is a position that either of these guys will 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 uh, will improve in 
over time. I think Patman, this is kind of Patman's, um, do you risk losing a talent like Patman? Um, and, you know, I don't think he clears waivers if he doesn't make the team 53 this year. Um, I think he is, he is a guy that can provide some value somewhere. Um, and I think, you know, Doolin is, is as good as Doolin's been. I think Tyler Bonds is a guy that could really develop on the, on the practice squad and kind of play that Doolin role. Uh, if not this year or later this year or definitely next year or the next I think Tyler Bonds is another very interesting uh, receiver that we have on this team. Gotcha. Well, I mean, let's talk about the offensive line real quick. Um, I want to talk about one guy in particular, and that's Sam Tevy. Uh, we've been talking about him. Anyone that's heard us talking on the podcast here the last week know just how much disdain uh, Cody and I have now at this point for Sam Tevy. I mean, we're – this has turned into a situation where this is the most surprising thing out of this whole off season. Sam Tevy is getting destroyed by backups in the NFL. Now, like this dude was playing left tackle for the chargers for most of last season. It's no wonder Justin Herbert is going to be primed to have a much better year this next year with Sam Tevy gone because my gosh, Sam Tevy has been terrible. And I've seen people in the comments say, I wish the Colts could afford to lose Sam Tevy. I'm saying, why not? Why can't yeah. we afford to? Like, there are plenty of tackles still on this roster that could still provide a better backup role than what Sam Tevy has shown this entire offseason and this entire preseason, nonetheless. So, I mean, what about this offensive line to you, especially Sam Tevy? I mean, can the Colts afford to just cut him at this point? Because he doesn't look like he deserves to be on this roster right now. A hundred percent. I think they can absolutely afford to cut this guy. I think your disdain for the – I don't think my disdain for uh, Sam Tevy is any different from how you how you and Cody feel. Uh, I despise Sam Tevy. I've started to learn the more praise you get outside of uh, – uh, before preseason or before training camp, the least like you're you're gonna make this team. I don't know if you remember, but it seemed like every week Chris Ballard was oozing over this guy. Like, man, Seth Ted is so great. It's almost as if like he was trying to boost this guy's confidence, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, you could. Eat, I think you could go find somebody that gets cut somewhere else and is a practice squad guy that you can sign onto your team, and he would instantly be better than Seth Teddy. That's how horrible I think this guy is. Um, gotcha. I don't know, and and maybe maybe you remember. Did did he get injured yesterday? Um, I don't know if Sam Tevy got injured yesterday. I didn't hear anything about it. Okay, I know there was a lineman that did get injured. I don't remember if it was Sam Tevy or not. Um, but regardless, um, I, yeah, I, I that's the first name I want to see uh, as far as wave players. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and for anyone I'm that on. wants to know, we have Carter O'Donnell, Will Fries, Julian Davenport. We have three backup tackles, and that's just to name a few. That's just to name a few that can play right tackle outside of just uh, outside of Sam Tevy. And obviously, we got uh, Eric Fisher coming back in a few weeks. So, I mean, just understand that we can afford to cut him. He has just looked absolutely atrocious. Well, let's go to the defense here. Uh, had themselves a relatively decent day in some areas, and some people didn't. Uh, for, let's start out rounding off with the tackles here. Isaiah Kafusi, another undrafted free agent, uh, had the best tackling day yesterday. Ten total tackles with one pass deflection. Great to see Kafusi doing that. Uh, everyone's been really hyping him up over this preseason, hoping that he can make the roster as well. Uh, Sean Davis, the rookie out of Florida, six tackles with four total uh, in solo. Uh, they said that he really struggled in the passing game yesterday, so we'll talk a little about that. Uh, Curtis Bolton and Anthony Chesley, uh, five tackles each, although Bolton had a pass deflection and an interception in yesterday's game. Uh, Bolton's another one that I've really grown to love over this offseason, but I don't know if he'll actually end up making this roster just due to how deep this uh, linebacker group actually is, but we'll 
see what they decide. And Isaac Rochelle rounds out the top five with four tackles, one sack, one tackle for loss, and a QB hit. Uh, let's talk about someone that I didn't mention here. Uh, Quiddy Pay getting another sack yesterday. Uh, I think I, I think a lot of people are going to just say, oh, well, you know, the left tackle barely even touched him. I mean, it was a freebie safety or sack. But then again, I think that goes to show you just how quick Quiddy Pay is off the line and how quick he can get around that that left tackle completely misjudged that angle to block him from. So is, how has it been to see Quiddy Pay getting so much pressure on these guys in the preseason? Yeah, it's been excellent. And, you know, beyond just Quiddy, that same play where Quiddy got the uh, the sack fumble, on the other side, Kamoko Ture was working the the right tackle, right? So this this is what we want. This is what we need for seven for now 17 games. Um, I, it, it gets me really, really excited. And uh, But real quick before we do go back, I do want to mention, I did look it up. It does look like Sam Tevi suffered a knee injury as well. Gotcha. So, um, but, yeah, no, it's really exciting. Uh, honestly, as fun as it was to watch him dominate, you know, you know, the backups, which is what you want, right? Um, um, it was also at some point, I'm sure most of Colts Nation was, all right, you know, he looks great. He looks good. I think he's ready to go. When is Take he him out. Take him out. Take him out. Don't get when him hurt, please. Off the field, right? <laughs> uh, right. But no, I thought he looked well. I thought Ben Bannigan played really well as well. Um, that's another guy that's just, you know, overall throughout the uh, entirety of camp has really stepped his game up and he struggled his first, I think he's been in like two years now, um, in the league. And I think he's really come on this year and has solidified himself a spot. He's, he did have, uh, missed tackles, which if you think about it, I don't know who didn't miss a tackle yesterday. Lots of missed tackles across the board, uh, which is, um, concerning in, in a way, especially with some of these guys and are, they're going to end up being rotational guys. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, it was awesome to see how well Quiddy Pay played yesterday. Yeah, and I think for this game specifically and throughout all of the offseason, there's a couple guys whose stocks have really rose and that we didn't expect. And a couple of those players include Andrew Brown and Chris Williams, our defensive tackles. Uh, they were just they were just phenomenal these last few games. I mean, we didn't expect anything from them, and they've been one of the best defensive players that we've seen on this uh, roster this whole preseason. And then you got a couple of the linebackers really stepping in, and you know it's also been great to see Isaac Rochelle, you know, really take advantage of the snaps that he's getting. Uh, has consistently been in the action the whole time. Uh, is there anyone else that you've seen that really uh, their uh, stock and ability to make this roster is really rose? Yeah, I mean, and this is the guy that more plays special teams for us, but is now getting some op opportunities at linebackers. Jordan Glasgow, I think that's a guy that's that's definitely uh, stuck out. You know, a guy who's kind of paid his dues on the special teams unit and has now has gotten some opportunity at linebacker, and I think he's played really well as well. Um, uh, Taylor Stallworth is another guy that I think has played well. It, it's really encouraging to see some of these guys that have kind of grown within the system and they're starting to to show off some of their, their showcase their talents in other ways than just special teams that we're used to seeing them. So I think Jordan Glasgow is a guy that, that kind of sticks out to me. Gotcha. Yeah, like I said, again, it's going to be interesting for the linebacker room. Uh, I think you and I both can agree here on one guy who lost stock yesterday. And that was Rocky Sin uh, after giving up that touchdown throw to Quintez Cephas, uh, the only touchdown throw that was made for Detroit all game. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm really trying. I'm really trying hard to be sympathetic here because I like what I've seen from Rocky Sin through the majority of training camp, and you know, I thought. Oh, well, you know, this is the last chance here, Rock, for you to show, hey, you know, I deserve that third corner spot and getting burned in the first quarter and giving up a touchdown just doesn't really do you a lot of favors. 
Yeah. I mean, I think the uh, secondary is a whole struggle, but that's definitely one that, that, that kind of sticks out. You know, we're still trying to find that third DB. Uh, obviously, see our top two is Xavier and Kenny. Uh, yeah, Rock had a chance to kind of seal that, and, and I think he lost some ground on that third, on that third DB spot to Isaiah Rogers. Um, but, yeah, it's really disappointing. You know, I, I understand DB is hard in, in the NFL. I understand it's a very pass-happy league. It's a very – it's a very difficult position, um, but you're you're in your you're entering your third year and you're still bringing a lot of inconsistencies at a at a spot that that's a big need. I think it starts to bring some concern for sure. Um, hopefully, it was. Uh, uh, I guess hopefully he gets it together. Like I I don't really know what else to say about Rockison. Um, <laughs> he really hasn't panned out the way we you know we've expected him to. Um, I don't even think he's been uh, mediocre if we look at the trajectory of his uh, his career here with Indy. It's 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 honestly really disappointing. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens here. I fully anticipate him to make the roster, but I just don't know how much time he's going to end up getting. Still going to be very interesting to see what the Colts do at that third corner spot. Do they go back to TJ Carey, or do they just let? Isaiah Rogers, who's been doing a lot better this offseason, uh, who's really been the only corner on this entire Colts offense or defense that hasn't really been blown up yet on any real routes yet. So we'll see what happens. But uh, nonetheless, that was the recap, guys, uh, from the game yesterday. Also, I, I guess that we might as well mention the kicks. Uh, we didn't necessarily talk about that. But Blankenship. Four of four yesterday for field goals with a 43 yarder. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong. Don't fact check me on here. But I think through all of training camp, they said all through training camp in the reg in the 11 on 11 drills and kicking in the in the preseason, Blankenship has yet to miss a field goal. Yeah, no, that's that's what I read as well. Hey. Competition brings the best out of people, and, and the top will always step up to competition, right? I think Rodrigo has, has proven that. I, I think he's had an excellent camp. Um, and, you know, he was a rookie. Like, at the end of the day, he was a rookie. And, you know, I think he would miss, like, what, five or six kicks maybe? Um, yeah, it was not that many. Um, yeah, again, you know, some, some, some things that you don't want to see. But coming into this year, I feel really confident about uh, goggles. So I'm really excited. Yep. Got to respect the specs, man. It's, it's his time once again. So, Hey guys, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you to Harish for joining me today. Uh, make sure to let us know what you guys thought in the comments. Uh, let us know what you think about the Colts being three and zero in the preseason, whether or not that means some kind of way to you, but thank you guys so much for joining us. And as always go Colts. Yeah.